let us all that we can to build a better future. Biden is getting Sanders and Manchin to work together. Oh, no. Hang on. We're all vomiting in our brains now. What am I talking about? Well, let's first play that video from uh, Case Study QB. Again, be sure to follow him on Twitter. He's doing a lot of great stuff. Faze, I really hate telling you to play this video, but please play this video. Because there's, wait, there's an alarm to watching this video. Oh, yeah, there is. Here it Perfectly is. You can probably hear it in the background. It's very apropos. Um, but let's go ahead and play that video. Hang on, people. Progressive. You're going to probably vomit in your brain. Democrats were furious at Democrats like Joe Manchin for killing the federal minimum wage hike. But what does it say about the Democratic Party, Democratic leadership, that they were able to get a progressive icon like Bernie Sanders and Joe Manchin, who represents a deeply red state of West Virginia, on the same page? It's exactly right, Stephanie. I mean, they they took the most popular proposals of the last year or so and put them on steroids. A lot of the things that we see in this bill, much of what we see in this bill, got bipartisan support in the last Congress. And, and listen, legislating is the art of the doable, right? I mean, it's not, you have to work, we say this in Punchbowl News frequently, you have to work with the Congress that you have, not the Congress that you like. And the Congress that Joe Biden has cannot do a $15 minimum wage, no matter how much he would like to, or no matter how no matter how much she, you know, they, they, they wish it could happen. But listen, I would say going forward in the future, it'll be interesting to see how much they can do that has Joe Manchin and Bernie Sanders on the same page. And it's not a lot, to be honest with you, Stephanie. There's not a lot that you could, a, a lot of areas you could thread that needle. So that will be, that's the continuing story of this Congress. Uh, uh, Joe Biden, uh, sorry, Joe Manchin has veto uh, power over the entire Democratic agenda. And to that Okay, let's let's take a step back. Look, I am I respect Bernie Sanders for the people he's inspired to get involved in politics and calling out our neoliberal system. But the other hand, too, the fact that Bernie Sanders went along with this um, COVID relief bill and never even uh, pushed back um, says a lot about his character and really how much fight he has left in him. Mm -hmm. And the very fact that again he's working with. You know, the fact that he calls Joe Biden his good friend and he's not fighting uh, has me worried about what's going to happen in 2022 and how the Democrats are going to try and fear monger and people to vote blue no matter who. I cannot stand for this and I will not turn a blind eye to this. The fact that we have Bernie Sanders, a progressive, saying, OK, yeah, I'll, I'll vote with this. But then that means also you're OK with Joe Manchin saying, I'm not going to do a damn thing, Bernie. That means you're willing to call even Joe Manchin your good friend. I, we have to look at other alternatives, but this whole idea of progressives just going along with you know their corporate uh, friends in the Democratic Party uh, really has me concerned about the future of progressives as a whole and this whole idea that we got to vote blue. You can't vote for Team Blue or Team Red because that relief package, that relief bill, it's not helping nobody. He's being treated like just like a, like a coin or something, like some commemorative plate that everyone's kind of waving around. It's like when Napoleon would pull out his aluminum silverware. It's it's a nice thing, but it's not what it could be. It's not what it should have been. Bernie has sort of become the thing that he was fighting, but still he inspired a lot of people. But we're going to have to wait a while for that to really bear fruit. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, um, it's it's just ugh, God. I, just even seeing that video, but knowing the fact that Bernie Sanders really did not fight for fifteen. That's and he, he gave just, a half fight. Yeah, he gave a half fight, and that was it. And then the House progressives they they said they were going to fight, but oh wait, Jank Uger did that video saying how he's going to burn bridges. Dude, you had no bridges there in the first Remember place. What, if only there was some more moment where they could have. I don't know, like forced vote of some kind. If they had like leverage. Whoa, hey, Dan, Dan, idea. Dan, Dan, as a host of the show, what you were talking was violence. Okay. How dare you? Are you the next Trump? <laughs> 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 All right. Bre breaking here at Heartlands Media. We got another video from Case Study TV about how progressives are moving Biden to the left. Hang on, Dan. You got to abuse yourself with this torture. All right. Here we go. I'm folks. ready. 
Ready, folks. Then Let's candidate go. Joe Biden made painstaking efforts to distance himself from Democratic Socialists within the party, often using words like transformative uh, instead of words like progressive to keep that distance there. But uh, messaging from President Biden's chief of staff from his official White House account is quickly undoing all that careful posturing. After the COVID relief bill passed, Ron Klain retweeted this Daily Beast article depicting Joe ah, Biden's head on Bernie Sanders' here. body with the message, if the mittens fit, you must admit Joe Biden is a progressive, a okay, big one, that. already a history. Real, super quick. I just want to make the point that Fox News is trying to say Biden's in charge of the party or something like that because a, a rag, the Daily Beast, which just demolished him when he was running both times and it just wrote terrible articles about him, had a picture that was tweeted by someone in the Biden administration. Solid proof. Oh, solid. Proof. Make that's all one. I'm saying. And progressives within the party are quick to boast about all they've been able to accomplish by keeping their coalition together. Sometimes progressive ideas sound radical at first, sound, oh, you can't implement them a little bit later, and then they become mainstream. The child well, tax credit well, we're right, not getting them, is buddy. basically a, a universal basic guaranteed income buddy, for children. They're not in the That's relief been advocated bill, so for, what are you getting years. at? But we were able to do it now with hardly ever a, a peep. That is revolutionary. What? They just didn't know it because they were, it, it, it came up on them, right, over, over the years. Buzzword time. But now President Biden is seeking bipartisan support on his next big piece of legislation, that infrastructure package geared toward creating jobs and stimulating the economy with a big focus on green investments. And Republicans say they've heard this song before with the COVID relief bill. Economic help was needed for families as well as for businesses. Uh, we're on board with that. You would have had bipartisan support for that. But you know what it also includes? It includes $1.9 billion to give stimulus checks to inmates. Now, inmates are already paid for by the taxpayer. They, they, they can't stimulate yeah, the economy unless they're purchasing jail contraband. Because of the ridiculous war on drugs, you bastard. Democratic uh, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse called the infrastructure bill our primary opportunity to move green priorities. And that is perking the ears of Republicans who are looking for more of a built in, quote, liberal agenda in this next bill. Jillian. Well, it's good to see that the Bernie Sanders inauguration meme is still making its way around the internet. <laughs> Jack. Ah, ha, 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 I ain't laughing. All right, here's the thing. That COVID-19 relief bill, that was supposed to help us out, but oh no, it's still nothing but crumbs, barely crumbs, if anything. And now this infrastructure bill that we talked about earlier in the show, all they're talking about is what, whether or not Republicans or Democrats will vote on it. Chances are it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall down to party lines. Nothing's going to change. And it's going to be crumbs again yeah. because if this infrastructure bill is supposed to help us out, what about the COVID relief bill? Will there be another one-time stimulus bill uh, check in that one too? Will it be $1,000? Will it be $600? Will it be nothing? I mean, again, it's it, this is the absolute uh, stupidity of voting blue no matter who. When you vote for the lesser of two evils, you still get evil. And the very fact that we have progressives right now saying, well, what we're doing are, are, is pretty awesome and revolutionary. I think it's a good idea. Like, where? What? Show me proof that the COVID relief bill has some progressive ideas. Daniels, Medicare for all in the COVID relief bill? Mm, no. Is $15 minimum wage in there, which should actually be $30? Mm, no, they didn't took it out. What about uh, $2,000 stimulus check? Uh, well, if you add up this really weird math from two different presidents, okay. Uh, actually, technically, here's a here's a good one. No, because in the time that they've announced fourteen hundred dollars, fourteen hundred dollars is no longer worth fourteen hundred dollars. Mm. So it's maybe like just under. It's maybe like five or ten dollars under two thousand. If you really think uh. about it. Okay, okay. And on top of that, too, you know, I'm not hearing anything about uh, student debt forgiveness or affordable college. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what our politicians are saying is, now that we're almost out of this crisis, which I mean, look, who knows what's going to happen with COVID-19 in the long run. But now that we're getting out of this crisis, um, we're, we're, we're moving right back to where we started from. And the sad fact is what the United States has proven, what our government has proven, what our corporate media has allowed to happen, and even larger independent media networks that have that coveted blue check mark, what they've allowed to happen is that they said 
that it's okay to treat the American people like pieces of crap, give them false sense of security, and give them false praise like, oh, you're an essential worker, so that means you're a hero. The United States government and our corporate media has proven that, no, we don't have to give our people stimulus checks. We don't have to protect them from getting evicted from their homes. We don't have to make sure that they have more unemployment benefits. We don't have to make sure that they have an increase in wages. They could treat us like crap. And the American people are just silent with it. And why? Because we've been trained so long to vote for Team Red and Team Blue. This isn't right. This is abuse. True abuse. And Bernie Sanders, you need to get this in your head. And maybe maybe, maybe you kind of like being treated like crap by the Democrats, but they're not your friends. They never were. And by you going along with this, same thing for the progressives in the House and Senate, if you're not going to fight, why should I give you my vote or support? Or why should I tell other people, in, in fact, people that live in different states than me, that, oh, yeah, you should support them? You haven't done anything. You let this happen. You are just as responsible as those bastards in the corporate Democratic Party and in the Republican Party. And I'm tired of being lied to. That's why I'm no longer a Democrat or a Republican. We got to look at other options, folks. Daniel. Yeah, this is the Democrats continuing to fail and let us down, which, of course, allows the Republicans to stay in power because the thing keeping Republicans going is the Democratic Party. The thing keeping the Democratic Party going is the Republican Party. Both parties are terrible. Both parties do terrible things. The Republicans are just more honest about how terrible they are and their leadership, and Democrats pretend that they're nice, good people when they basically want the exact same thing. So what, what do we do? We have to, to keep building up alternate media power, and we have to build up our own political power because the way we take back not just small victories but win the war is with infrastructure. Voters constantly coming out to vote, People getting people to think on ideas, media, overturning old media. We just have to replace all the existing systems with better ones.